Hi, I'm a postdoc here at the University of Oslo. And today I will talk a little bit about a work I developed during my PhD studies, entitled Two Models, Same Result, Addition as Key Modulator for Cell Migration Under Confinement. So as we know, cell migration is key for life. And this study of cell migration allows us to better understand not only health and physiological process, but also disease. Metastasis, for example, is one of the most complex migration phenomena, and it's not quite well understood yet. The system we are interested in modeling is the single cell crossing through a dense environment composed of fibers, as you see in the screen. Why should you use two models for the same system? Well, our aim is, is not to, to model uh, the biological system in its full complexity, but instead we'd like to build simplified models that preserve the key biological features in the system. Uh, when we have two models, it allows us to assess the assumptions and approximations we apply in the, in the process. In this way, uh, we can uh, verify how robust are our results, if they are the, the same or not, and if they are not the same, why uh, uh, we have it in this way. The first approach we used is the phase field model. In the phase field model, we have these functions that are called uh, order parameters that are used to <clears throat> describe the different components in our system. Uh, phi here is used to describe our cell in red and the psi is used to describe uh, the fibers in the extracellular matrix. Then we have the fibers and the cells interacting by adhesion and repulsion, um, and this advective term that makes our cell move in one direction with a constant velocity. And then we have these other terms that are uh, responsible for maintaining the cell shape. Then we have a very different model uh, called dissipative particle dynamics. Uh, it's, uh, it's similar to molecular dynamics where we compute the force explicitly. Uh, our cell here is described as uh, several monomers uh, that are these uh, round spheres uh, connected to a, center, a central bead by a harmonic potential or a spring potential. Um, and we also describe the fibers as flexible entities um, composed of many monomers connected by this uh, spring potential uh, in a chain. So the key question we'd like to answer with this work is how is migration affected by mechanical constraints? First, we start to uh, observe qualitatively the, the system. Uh, we see here that for a low density of fibers, our cell can move almost freely uh, in a uni unidimensional way. Um, then when we increase the density of fibers, uh, we start to observe that the cell um, needs to squeeze and deform more its shape in order to get through <clears throat> the interstitial space. And uh, at the same time, we observe a more three-dimensional uh, path. We also uh, measure the mean velocity as a function of the density of fibers, rho. Uh, there's nothing special here happening. Uh, the velocity is decreasing as we increase the density of fiber. This is expected because when we have a more a crowded environment, it's more difficult for the cell to move. So the velocity decrease. We have here three values for the addition coefficient eta. We observe the same results for the dissipative particle dynamics with rigid and flexible fibers. Uh, uh, for flexible fibers, we have uh, higher velocities, uh, which is expected because uh, the cell can uh, push the fibers and get through uh, more easily. But uh, there are something interesting going on here for high uh, density of fibers. Seems that uh, velocity is increasing with adhesion. So to investigate this further, we fixed the uh, density of fibers at uh, 0 0.6 um, <clears throat> and varied the addition coefficient eta. Uh, and we, what we observe is that uh, as we increase the 
addition coefficient, the velocity increase um, until it reaches a maximum and then starts to decrease when we increase further the addition coefficient. And this is observed both for the phase field model and the dissipative particle dynamics model with and without uh, flexible fibers. We also compared two results in the literature where they use fibronectin coating concentration as a proxy to um, increase adhesion in the system. And they also observed the same qualitative behavior with uh, an optimal value for migration. We also quantified the cell shape um, using the surface, surface tension, uh, which gives us a measure of uh, surface roughness. Um, so when we have a higher, uh, a high dense, a high surface tension, we uh, have uh, uh, our cell more deformed, and uh, we see that for a high density of fibers and a high uh, adhesion coefficient, we have a more um, a roughness, surface roughness uh, in our cell. And uh, in order to compare our results with uh, experimental data in the literature, we computed also the pore cross-section. Uh, here we are comparing our results with uh, fibrosarcoma cells from a cell line uh, that are uh, migrating red tail median we, uh, without and with uh, this metalloproteinases inhibitor, the GM6001. We see that uh, uh, our cell is less flexible and gets trapped for a higher pore cross section than the experimental cell. Um, these uh, fibrosarcoma cells can get through very small apertures of only three micrometers wide. Um, and in this case, without the uh, MMP inhibitor, uh, we don't observe that the cell uh, is getting trapped at all. But then when they um, use this um, inhibitor, the cell starts to, to get trapped for a very small uh, pore cross section. Um, and we have the same slope uh, as in our uh, computational results. Uh, similar results are observed for the dissipative particle dynamics. But uh, in this case, uh, the DPD cell is more flexible, so it can migrate through smaller pore cross sections. Uh, and uh, compared to the um, experimental data with the MMP inhibitor, uh, we have um, a very good fit uh, with the flexible uh, uh, fiber, uh, fibers model. Uh, for the phase field model, we, we investigate further the, um, and compare the results with uh, adhesion. Um, and what we observe is that here we start by the result we showed before without adhesion. Uh, and when we increase to 0 0.5, the eta coefficient, our result starts to become more similar, more closer to the rat tail um, median result from the experimental data. And then when we increase further uh, addition, uh, we have a very good fit with the <clears throat> experimental data with the MMP inhibitor. Uh, this is interesting because we, can, we are able to reproduce different uh, uh, experimental conditions by changing only one parameter. Um, and this might indicate that there is more uh, going on uh, with um, <clears throat> MMP inhibitor, more than inhibiting the degradation in the system. Uh, and in fact, in recent years, uh, it was discovered that uh, some MMP isoforms are responsible to um, regulate adhesion and migration. And this, um, this inhibitor is a, a pot potent and a broad, spe broad spectrum one. Um, so it would be interesting to, to, to see not new experiments where uh, these specific MMPs are targeted uh, to see what, um, what is the real effect of um, 
uh, shutting down uh, degradation or uh, these uh, regu uh, addition regulators uh, via um, the ma matrix metalloproteinases. So um, we have very uh, simple models um, of droplets, but uh, uh, it is uh, still able to mimic some features of the cells in uh, confined uh, environments. Uh, we were able to reproduce different experiments, experimental setups by changing adhesion only. And uh, since we have the same uh, results for the dissipative particle dynamics and the phase field models, uh, these results are model independent. Um, so if you'd like to discuss more uh, this work, please reach me out in my uh, social networks. I'd like to thank my PhD supervisor, Rui Vasso, and my collaborator, uh, Professor Jose Rafael Bordin, and uh, my co-author, uh, Susana Cunha. Thank you.